It's a nerd. It's a game. It's a Roll for Crit expansion review. Hi, I'm Will Keeler, and earlier this year, Jonathan ranked his favorite Legendary expansions for the Marvel Legendary deck building game, and I thought, why not the DC deck building game as well? This is a game we have reviewed before. You can watch on our channel, but that was a while ago, and a lot has come out since then. So, we're going to look at all the products, and I'm going to rank them and tell you what I think about them. But, we're going to have a couple rules first. First, this is from Cryptozoic Entertainment, and they have a lot of other properties in their deck building series. Rick and Morty, Naruto, Attack on Titan. We're going to look just at the DC property. Maybe we'll rank the others in a further time. Also, the products come in different styles, like we have core sets, expansions. So, I'm going to have multiple lists to keep them comparative with their counterparts. So, one list is going to be core sets, stuff you can just buy right away and play with multiple people. Next is going to be all the two-player stuff. Then we're going to look at all the Crisis expansions. And finally, all the other expansions, pretty much everything else. So, with all those out of the way, let's take a look into the DC deck building game. Number five on my list of base games goes to DC Confrontation. This is the base game where it's actually designed for it to be team play, where one side plays heroes, the other plays villains. This is sort of an expansion on the original Batman vs. Joker Rivals expansion, or except instead of just being two players, you can have more than two. The way the game works is very similar, if you don't know. You actually fight against each other, and each player has three cards. And if you're able to completely knock out the other player before the main deck runs out, then your team wins. Otherwise, it goes back to points. Uh, initially, when we got this, we thought it was going to be really great because we played the rivals and we're like, oh, this would have been awesome if we had more people. But we turned out to be really slow. Uh, we felt that, that while some of the cards are cool, it just felt like, in the end, maybe sometimes one person just felt like they had to wait for everyone to discuss things. And especially if you're getting hate drafted, which tends to happen in the rival format, you're just sort of like, my deck's not great and they're just keep buying what I want, uh, which makes... It, a lot as bad as in Rivals, but still can happen, so it's at the bottom of my list. It's not the worst of them all, uh, of the defenders of the DC deck building game, but it's definitely, I think, of the core sets, shouldn't be your first one. Number four on my list actually goes to the original DC deck building game. Some people may surprise, because this includes everyone's favorites, such as Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. But we found that, while we love most of the games this and up, this one had a lot more cards that felt, as soon as someone bought, mainly like Super Strength, uh, Laser Vision, really anything with Superman on it, makes sense. It snowballed, could snowball really fast. So of all the games, we feel like this is the one that maybe has a little bit of imbalance, but it still was a lot of fun, especially if you really just want to play as the main DC characters. Number three on my list is Heroes Unite. This came out after the original set, so it didn't really have anything crazy going on. It felt like more fixed some of the issues from the first set. Uh, there's still some cards people complain about, mainly in our group, Saint Walker and Sign Cell, since those can lead to some really crazy scores. However, if you see someone buying those, it's a little bit easier to try to maybe stop them from going crazy when a super strength or the laser vision sort of nothing you can do about it, usually. Uh, with a course that had some more of expanded universe, maybe some less known characters, which is really cool. Especially if you uh, grew up on things like the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited show, so you knew some maybe uh, a wider universe. It's definitely had a lot of fun there. Number two and one, both are when they decided to add sort of a gimmick to the base set, which actually brought a lot of fun in my opinion, which is why they ranked above the rest. Number two being the Teen Titans expansion. The idea in this one is it comes with a lot of ongoing cards. In all the sets, there are locations which, once played, stay out in front of you. These are always usually seen as strong since they don't go back in your deck and you can usually have them available to you. So a lot of people would want to be able to be the ones who bought them. Teen Titans pretty much said, okay, what if we gave that to a lot of cards? And a lot of cards will have keep out until you need to remove it to defend or to use it for power. I really enjoyed that a lot and in some sense I almost make it think it's my favorite. However, I think the mechanics in number one really shine beyond what Teen Titans has because the way the ongoing works, sometimes the engines can take a little long because you need to sort of build up your ongoing area before you really start hitting that high power cap to defeat supervillains. And number one for the base sets goes to Forever Evil. This one you actually play as the villains. Unlike in Jonathan's list with Marvel Legendary Villains, I find the villain set is done very well. 
The way this set works is you actually have victory points. You can earn through cards or from your base character, and they give extra points at the end of the game. But a lot of cards also you sort of use them as a resource. This made things a lot more interesting, gave some more decisions, depending on certain cards. There's also, also a lot more with destroying cards and stuff, and overall, I think, unlike Titans Go, Teen Titans, not Titans Go, uh, where the mechanics could slow down a bit before you got the engine, this didn't really feel like it slowed down. You still had a lot of fun with all the points. Also, the Frozen card, which we see a couple on later on expansions, was really cool, too, because you can sort of almost reserve a card if you didn't have enough power. Added a lot more interesting gameplay, I felt and was really fun to play along with overall. What I just went over were all base sets for multiple players, but they have released a few sets designed just for two people in mind, or at least when you buy the initial product. So we're gonna rank those products and see which ones I think are the best. Number three is DC Deck Building Rivals Batman vs. Joker. This was actually the first of the two player sets in the rival idea, and it was very interesting. I don't think it's terrible buy, but with the two player rival sets, what I've noticed in most of my games, it tends to be less about, oh, I'm really playing my Batman deck versus my Joker deck and see who's better. It really becomes who can sort of hate draft the other person more. And that's why I, these two-player games, I'm not as big of a fan. Uh, I don't know, uh, balance-wise, you can tell me, but in our games with this set at least, Joker has always won. Batman has not won a single game. So I don't know whether he's better. I don't know uh, whether it's because deals with superpowers, because often people, some of the people in my group always complain that superpower cards in general, regardless of the set, are too strong. And Joker tends to be is with superpowers while Batman's with equipment. But uh, that's why it's at the bottom of the list. I think it's just, that's what, it seems with this set, it's a lot of the earlier stuff is going to be a little bit lower because they're still trying to find out how everything works. But in the end, it was still a lot of fun for a two-player game. And... The fact that you can just buy it and just play two-player without expansion is pretty cool. Next up is Rivals Green Lantern versus Sinestro. This is actually the newest product to come from the Cryptozoic Entertainment series. And it is a little bit interesting because it's sort of, they've seen Confrontation and, D and uh, Batman versus Joker, so they've tweaked some things a little bit. And they added a keyword to some cards called Constructs, like Constructs. Uh, in essence, it's the stuff that uh, the ring bearers will make from their rings. And I thought that was really cool, but in this base set alone, pretty much that equivalents to what are the kicks, which is uh, they call light constructs, and superpowers. So it doesn't really mean much right in the base set alone, but uh, it tells you how to mix it with either Batman versus Joker or with Confrontation, which use the same gaming mechanics. And then that will shine a lot more and be much cooler. I think that keyword thing is something that they should use a bit more. I hope. Uh, we actually have seen some of the other ones, which we'll get to at the end of the video, uh, outside of the DC deck building game. But uh, it's definitely a cool idea. But once again, it still can sometimes lead. I didn't, we, the game we had, we, both sides have won. But there have been times like this person won not playing the green, way Green Lantern card says with heroes in defense. He, went, he just bought all the attack cards before Sinestro could. Uh, still feels like there's a bit of uh, hate draft in there. Now, you may say, well, you've gone over all the rivals, so there's no more two-player games left. Well, there's actually one more, and to me, it's probably the biggest surprise out of the entire set, and that's the Teen Titans Go tech building game. This is based off the cartoon, which is very polarizing to DC fans. Some love it, some hate it. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan of it, but the game itself, I think, is fantastic. It is designed to be two-player, but more like the original base games, so, so there's a stack of supervillains, you're not really fighting against each other. And one of the amazing things they introduce is sidekicks. And the sidekicks are pretty much all the cards you don't play with, you flip to the other side, and they'll say things like, if you play two heroes return, recruit this sidekick, and you have a bonus as long as you play a hero. This is really cool, and you can pretty much just throw into any game. You just take all the car sidekick cards and flip them over, and then people start passing them because people can capture from other players. And I just thought it's so much fun to have around. The cards themselves are, while well, all the pictures from the show, are actually pretty nice in the sense that all the cards come uh, from cost one to five. So sometimes in a game like this, any kind of random lineup, you could have moments when every card in the lineup is like six, seven, eight, and you're just like, oh God, there's nothing cheap. Well, they made it so that it was very hard to happen, which is really cool. The final big thing is that their weakness cards are actually all unique. They're not just negative points. They have weird things like you can only play three cards this turn and things like that. They also have, instead of vulnerabilities, they have snack time, which sounds silly, but it's getting rid of a weakness and putting it 
uh, back in the weakness pile, or their kicks are, in essence, a defense, so there's always a defense around. This is perfect for younger kids because now cards aren't more expensive. Uh, you always have defenses, so you can not ha feel nearly as hurt from uh, attacks. And the art, I mean, so the Teen Titans Go show is, they like it. And honestly, like a lot of that stuff you can throw in with the other sets. Like sometimes I like to take some of the uh, snack time and swap them out for vulnerability for people so they have one card in there to get rid of weaknesses. I think it makes things a lot more interesting. And of all the sets, it, uh, the core sets you can play with, it seems to be the fun to sort of mess around and mix with. But maybe you're not feeling competitive, and that's when the DC Crisis sets come in. Each of these are designed to be sort of a everyone working together against these super impossible mode villains, as well as a crisis deck, which sort of is bad events based on actual comic book storylines. This is perfect if you want to have more of a cooperative game, and there are four released so far. And truthfully, whichever core sets you have, you want the one that matches with it because each one sort of plays off the course that it's supposed to be paired with. So that really should be the most important ranking to you. However, I decided to rank them assuming that you mix up the course and which one I thought was best. Number four goes to Crisis Pack 2. This is the one that's supposed to be paired up with Heroes Unite. While I really did enjoy Heroes Unite, the Crisis Pack 2 was fine. It had some cards that they didn't label, which is a, a little bit annoying. And uh, while compared to the rest, I think it was all right. It's not the worst. Thing, but I preferred some of the other Crisis ones better. Number three goes to the original Crisis set. Uh, this one, I once again, it's great because it can mix with any of them. Since it was designed with the core set, there weren't any weird mechanics involved. But once in the end, it still is very vanilla. And when you, for me personally, when you look at uh, Teen Titans and Forever Evil, the the core mechanic, the new mechanics they add to that in a full set are just fantastic. Number two goes for the Forever Evil Crisis expansion. This would be pack three. I do like Forever Evil, and this added a really interesting mechanic where everyone has secret goals, even one person even being able to be a traitor. However, sometimes that can be a little bit annoying at times, and I don't think it was perfect. It's fun, it's different, but I wasn't 100% on board with it. Uh, still, the Forever Evil point system, very cool. Because you're all working together and victory points don't matter, those point tokens sometimes are either if you can feel worthless, but with certain cards, then you're like, you wouldn't think about spending them, but now you're like, it doesn't matter. I don't care about score. So it does some interesting mechanics can occur from playing ver uh, cooperative versus uh, everyone for themselves. And finally, we have Crisis 4. This is the Teen Titans Crisis expansion. In this, everyone actually has personal crises because teens all have their own problems. This is interesting because each person has to deal with their own things, so maybe one person could have a card that says you can't play superpowers. It makes things a bit more interesting because if one person can get really not, you know one per card affects someone really poorly, everyone can work to help that person. If not, maybe you just try to focus on helping whoever gets hurt the most or just trying to build your deck up more. It also introduces unity cards. These are cards that will say things that when a unity card is played, including this one, effect occurs. This is really awesome because I could buy this Unity card. Let's say that says draw a card whenever a Unity card is played. And then when another player plays one, we he gets to draw a card. So we all sort of start helping each other with these Unity cards. And I thought that was a really fun sort of back and forth mechanic along with these sort of personal crises. However, overall, I do think the crises are all fun uh, with the core sets. I don't think any of them are bad buy. Just you really do need to make sure they're paired with their core set. Uh, for example, the Titans one does like ongoing cards, so if you throw in the original set, it's going to probably be not nearly, or more difficult probably might be the better uh, phrasing. So definitely want to make sure you buy the one with the core set you have. Finally, we're going to take a look at all the things that require a base set to be thrown in. Uh, this is pretty much all the uh, crossover packs with a couple other things. Starting off right at the bottom, we're going to go over promos. I think the promos, one, I'm not a big fan of making things hard to get if they're game mechanic wise. If they were just alternate art, no problem. Uh, the other thing is because they're promos, they tend to be either really strong, in which everyone complains when someone uses that character, or uh, not really worthwhile. So I really not a big fan of them in that sense. And also, you know, sometimes, especially if certain cards, like the Joker was the uh, was a promo, which is crazy to me because, you know, people don't want to play the Joker. And Martian Manhunter 2, he's a favorite of mine. I don't know why DC doesn't like Martian Manhunter. 
So going to actual expansions now, number eight goes to the Arrow crossover. This is number two out of the seven that have been released. And this one really is, out of all the rest, the one that just didn't work. All these in general, with the exception of a few, that we do have a problem because, and we I think we mentioned the legendary video too because it's a problem there. When they release expansion, they'll put a keyword and it never comes up again. So you really have to make sure your card gets expansion and Arrow shows all the traits where everything goes wrong. Uh, the idea is it's basically the Arrow TV show and you're supposed to hide cards uh, underneath your big character card. And it just wasn't really fun. And if you don't have the right cards, it just felt like your big card was worthless. It didn't feel really like it mixed with anything. When it comes to using of all the sets, that's the one everyone says we can't allow in the game. And it's a shame because, I mean, I watched the Arrow show and I enjoyed it, but it just, I don't want to play that expansion. Number seven goes to the Birds of Prey crossover. This one is much better than the previous one, but it does sort of really need a, a specific base sets, I think, to go well. The way this one works is you play a lot of ongoing cards uh, and you try to rotate them uh, using either big card or their abilities. And if they either rotate completely or maybe every time they rotate, they do something. It's sort of cool, but once again, when there isn't a lot of ways to rotate, it's sort of a pain. Uh, it works it really want to be in Titans because then there's a lot of things that will fetch ongoing cards for you or you can even rotate other car ongoing cards aren't them and that still is helpful so it really is a very uh dependent on what you're playing with but uh i think it still was a le uh pretty fun number six goes to legion this is crossover pack three this is based off sort of the super futuristic heroes this one has a keyword time travel where people can play the card and the super villains all have time travel with attacks and stuff so the idea is that everyone's just attacking each other it's a bit more aggressive and uh it's a bit more fun that way the time travel you can play cards you can't buy yet from the lineup and stuff but the it really comes down once again uh this one shows the problem with you want to have cards from your keyword and there are certain cards that are like oh they're all right uh the big cards but when the other cards aren't able to buy time uh, uh, time travel cards and stuff, they just feel so underwhelming. So the problem there really is just that it's too small. Next up, we've got Watchmen. This is probably, I, I want to say, the weirdest one besides Teen Titans Go. Uh, obviously, because it's not really just DC Heroes. While DC owns Watchmen, it's a completely different universe. Uh, but I'm counting it because it has the DC logo on it, and it's part of their crossover lineup. Uh, in this one, someone will be playing a traitor who uh, wants to defeat everyone, but it's, no one knows who. So the hidden ro it's got a huge hidden role. And unlike the crisis one, uh, you have to look around. You're not sure what people are up to, but you don't have to worry about a crisis deck. So it focuses a bit more on that. And the cards in question will really have to deal with that. There's a card that literally can kill a player, remove, eliminate them, remove them from the game. You can't play with that when mixing with other sets. It does not work. Uh, that's why it goes a little lower, but because it's so weird and it's sort of nice to see something of different that's still DC, I, I, I decided to give it above uh, both Legion and uh, Birds of Prey. These final ones are all very good. Uh, first off, we're going to look at Rogues. This is one that's really designed to go with Forever Evil, but a lot of the cards have teamwork, uh, but it works out really well and it's really fun to sort of like, here's a point, and we'll go back and forth and triggering or things all like that. Uh, you do want to mix it with the DC uh, Forever Evil expansion, really the one you want to go for. But I think you probably could get away. But once again, with, when you do with Forever Evil, where there's a lot more points coming around, you can have a lot more fun. Number three goes to New Gods. It's the uh, newest crossover expansion, number seven. Uh, in this one, you're actually playing as the New Gods from either Apocalypse or New Genesis. And in this game, instead of fighting a super villain, uh, you are trying to attack each other's planets. It's not truly two teams, but you got superheroes and supervillains. Superheroes trying to destroy Apocalypse, while supervillains trying to destroy New Genesis. That's really the end game mechanic. And what I like about this one is be really the gimmick in it is just power. The idea is you're trying to get nine power or more, just go crazy because they're new gods. They should be crazy in power. Uh, so. This can go into any set, 
which is really nice. You don't have to think like, well, I want to make sure I get those victory points for Forever Evil when dealing with rogues. Or Birds of Prey really wants Team Titans to get more ongoing card-related stuff. This can go anywhere. Personally, I think it works best in the DC deck building game original, probably because it has all, all those crazy cards I mentioned before. This is sort of like, yeah, that's okay with us. And my only big gripe with it is the villains, uh, big cards that you play as, are a lot more interesting and fun. Uh, a dark side has this weird ability where he can destroy a card that costs one or more to get two power and draw a card, which can give him a really interesting, great start. While another guy says, as long as you don't play a starting card, you get seven cards, to, you get two more cards you draw at the end of your turn, I guess I should say, the exact wording. Uh, which can be very interesting because then you don't have to play your entire hand. You're like, I won't play this, so uh, I get more cards in hand or stuff like that. It's really f uh, fun, those two. Uh, Granny Goodness is really interesting too. She's a bit more versatile with heroes and villains. And the other cool thing is in a lot of the sets, that's sort of an issue with snowballing. When you defeat a supervillain, uh, you add them to your deck usually. And that, they usually have a good ability. Uh, when you defeat one of the planets, they're sort of leveled up three like in the rival set. You just add to a victory point pile sort of underneath your card. So by getting a huge power turn, it doesn't net you a huge card. It gives you victory points, but isn't going to make you sort of snowball out of control, which is another really nice thing, meaning that uh, you're not going to have that one person like, oh, he got the first few supervillains so he can go nuts, which is really nice. Number two is actually not a crossover pack, but it's actually the multiverse box. I put it at number two because this is sort of worthless to you unless you're planning to buy more than two core sets and really be a collector like I am. Uh, it is really fantastic. Not only is it a cool box, as you can see, really nice thick walls and holds everything. It comes with plastic dividers and all future sets will come with plastic dividers for that. Uh, it holds the cards nicely. It Also, what's interesting is it comes with its own mini expansion with how to pretty much play with everything. And that's really cool because it comes with this randomizer deck. So you like every turn you might play with uh, one main core set, but every turn you're like, oh, this time we're going to have a second lineup with Forever Evil or with from the Birds of Prey set. And this is really fun. All my friends love it. It does. It is a bit. It takes a lot much longer than the other games. But uh, outside, as we said, with Arrow, Arrow is the one that no one likes. Uh, we pretty much always have fun seeing that come up and seeing what hits the lineup and all, uh, all these crazy stuff can occur. So definitely really almost a number one. It's just that, like I said, if you're not planning to buy more than maybe a corset in a pack, probably not for you. And finally, we're going back to actually to the original. This is one where the first one to me is one of the best. This is the Justice Society of America. The way this expansion pack works, it can mix with any of them. It really is just punches do a lot more interesting stuff, which is really cool. Uh, it makes uh, your basic cards actually matter a little bit more. You have to think about it. Because most games, when you play deck building game, their basic cards are just like, ah, oh, just destroy them and get them out of here. And now Justice Society of America is like, but you could get some cool stuff. And it has a lot of those really old characters. And I like the art on it too. Uh, sort of that, like a really nice, I don't, I don't know what to uh, call it. I'm sure someone who's a more of a uh, comic book fan could say in the comments down below. But really, it's the one I've had the most fun with playing by itself. And like I said, the fact it can combine with anything, I can't ignore that fact. So I've ranked all the different products, and you may be wondering, okay, so what do you think I should actually should buy? Well, when looking at everything all together, I think that if you haven't bought anything before, uh, depending on who your playgroup is, I think Teen Titans Go or Heroes Unite are your best choice. Heroes Unite is a uh, multiplayer. It also fixes a lot of the problems, so it's not as much snowballing. Uh, it's probably, I think, the most played core set out of the ones we have. Granted, it's a little bit older, which is why. And I think that that's a lot of fun. Like I said, there are those few point cards that can go uh, a little crazy, but you can sort of rein it in by knowing if that person has, like, St. Walker, don't let them buy all the heroes. And um, the Dean Titans Go one, I think it's much better for younger, uh, if you have kids. Uh, like I said, it works really well and I think a lot of the cards almost are great to throw in with other sets. Uh, the weaknesses, uh, you, and you might not get negative points, but it does more game things. And that by making the weakness stack maybe face down, you're not sure whether you get a, a basic minus one weakness or one of the Teen Titans Go ones. There's a bit more interesting dynamic there. Uh, though you may have to look around with worrying about things like with uh, Bizarro. Uh, oh, Bizarro. Um, but those are definitely, I think, two core sets you should look into first. As for expansions, um, Honestly, grab the Crisis set that goes with the base set you're buying. Uh, you can't go wrong there. 
you're going to have a lot of fun and all of them, I think that just allows you to have a cooperative mode as well as competitive mode. So you can't go wrong there. Once you're planning on buying more than one thing, then get the box. Uh, this has everything but the big cards in there. I honestly actually have that Batman tin back there to hold all the big cards for all my Crypto Zone games. It's actually pretty full now. I'm probably going to have to worry about that uh, pretty soon. But overall, this is still really nice. These the plastic dividers are great. You know, I will say Cryptozoic with this and uh, AEG with their Smash Up box, they know uh, we like some things that are nice and sturdy. Uh, some other companies could learn about maybe a collector's box or at least an insert. As for the uh, crossover packs, they're not too expensive, so it's not usually too bad. I really would avoid the Arrow unless you're a fan of the show because I just think mechanically it's not fun. Um, just As I said, Justice Society of America and New Gods are good bets because they can pretty much mix with any of the sets. Unless uh, you're planning to buy Forever Evil, then highly recommend Rogues. It definitely does shine really well when you get the Forever Evil set. And uh, Birds of Prey isn't terrible when you got all the ongoing cards with uh, Teen Titans Go. So overall, that's uh, all the stuff from this. So let's talk about the future. We know there are another crossover pack that is based on the new Ninja Batman animated movie, as well as something called uh, Rebirth. Uh, I believe it has wooden meeples and stuff. Uh, I think that got delayed a bit, so can't really comment too much on that one. My thoughts of what I would like to see, uh, while Arrow did uh, mechanically to me, did poorly, I don't think, I mean, maybe a cin uh, something based on the cinematic or expansive universe, I forget what they call it, might be interesting. Just don't do what Legendary did where you make a base set that has the same cards with maybe two or three different cards. If you're going to use the cinematic universe, make it a little different. You can do it. It doesn't have to be crazy. Just make it somewhat, maybe tweaked a little bit somehow. Uh, I think the, I earlier mentioned the rivals from Le Green Lantern Sinestro. The keyword on it, construct, is a great idea. And we actually sort of saw this in the Cartoon Network deck building game. I know I said I wasn't going to rank the uh, other Cryptozoic games, but I will talk about them a little bit. And what I liked in that is they had cards like they had male, some cards were named, labeled male and female, sometimes neither. Also gems from uh, Steven Universe. And certain cards would be uh, if you played a gem pre uh, uh, last turn plus power or something. And I think that could be a really cool mechanic. What if there was like, similar to Legendary with the symbols. Like if you had a Batman and like for every Bat family member you play. It would be great, uh, especially uh, if you, with some of the cards like that, you can do a bit more interesting things. Um, Confrontation had symbols that sort of like it, but I don't think there's any card that really refers to like playing a Wonder Woman symbol or a Superman symbol. I think it's more of if you want to throw in the Batman, Joker, or Sinestro and Lantern so you can be like, take out these two pairs to put those two in. I think that the keywords like that could be a big thing. And the final thing is I think they could release a core set similar to Arkham Horrors. I believe it's called Misk, uh, the Terror Miskatonic University or something like that. This is from the second edition. And what that one did was pretty much took all the keywords and weird stuff from all the expansions and made cards so they can mix. And that way it would be awesome with what if there was a time travel card, for example. What if it time traveled, but every time it time traveled, you put a victory point token from like the Forever Evil set on it. And whoever bought it got them. So it's sort of interesting. You want to keep time traveling it so it gets worth more points. And more things like that. Because it make all the expansions could be easily thrown in there. Because you know you're going to see things like time travel rotation. Uh, even maybe hiding under cards for Arrow. And that could be a lot of fun. And add some more expansion and mix and match. Especially for the multiverse. Because I know that if they made a set that had all of the keywords. Uh, for all the expansions. I'd probably be the, only, the core set I'd use for the multiverse game. It would, just because you're guaranteed every expansion then will be able to mix with that. And I think that would be a, a great addition, uh, especially since I think they've hit a lot of the major stuff uh, character-wise. I'm sure everyone has favorites that are in there. Finally, the other maybe interesting weird thing they could do in terms of outside of a simple small crossover pack or the sort of big every keyword pack might be, I think, uh, based on the, I think it's called uh, Dark Knight's Metal. Uh, this is a recent storyline where sort of all these evil Batmen uh, led by Barbados, I believe it's how it's said, uh, are pretty much destroying the regular multiverse because it's the light multiverse and they're jealous and stuff like that, uh, whatever the case. I think that could be an interesting way for them to make a 1v all style where one player actually plays as Barbados and probably has several cards for the other Batmen 
and maybe could sort of throw different. He has his maybe he can either buy from their lineup or maybe has his own and like can throw cards in them like special weaknesses or something. Sort of how he sort of corrupts uh, their multiverse and whatnot. It could be an interesting addition. That's where um, I think uh, uh, Christ, the DC deck volume is. They try to add these new things like the rival set, uh, hit the hidden roles in both the Crisis Pack Three and Watchmen. Uh, 1v all could be another really interesting mechanic they could throw in. I mean, we'll see what they do in Rebirth. Uh, if they keep the title, it's, I don't know if they're going to go along with that. But uh, overall, that's my list. Tell me what you think or which ones you've played. Do you think I'm completely wrong? Do you think certain sets are better for first buys? Do you think certain sets are just more fun? Uh, do you enjoy the arrow set? I'm really curious because, like I said, no one in my playgroup likes that. You can let me know in the comments down below. But until then... I'm Will Keeler, and this has been a Roll for Crit Review. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome board game content from Roll for Crit. And please leave a comment. We're lonely.